Okay, so this is exactly what I did last time. So I don't, hmm. Okay, I'll send out the invite while I'm up. Hopefully that works. Just give them a call. I saw that I was tagged in a post. So when he gets here, it's going to be absolutely amazing. He's a podcaster. He's a comedy writer. He's a comedian. I'm just texting. Okay, sent again. I'm pretty sure this part isn't going to make the final cut. The fun part about Facebook Live is that you can't uh, you can't start it with somebody. You got to invite them uh, while you're already on. That requires two people knowing what they're doing. And I sent it again. Now he says that he's here again. <laughs> Ryan, are you are you on video chat right now? Are you on are you on video chat though? It says that you're watching. That's awesome. I could talk about you for a while. It's great that you're here. So, Ryan, can you send a request to join the video chat? Are you able to do that? Uh, okay. Do you see that you're? Do you see that you're on the screen? Because I don't see you. If I think you have to invite me. Uh, I have to invite you while you're okay. Because okay. This will be the Okay, so it's adding. I have 13 people. It's gone swimming in invited members. It's connecting. It's connecting. Hey! <laughs> I would be terrible just on my own. That was awful. Hi. Hi. And, uh, okay, I'm just trying to. Hey, are you <laughs> No, but this doesn't work if you're on a laptop, so I didn't know that. Oh. Uh, and now I'm just awkwardly holding my cell phone, so I'm going to find something to put my cell phone on. Okay, yeah, take a second. That's fine. I'll talk to uh, Julius Wilson. Too quiet? Can you hear me okay? Or are you mocking me? I never know. Can you guys, can you hear me okay? This is the first time that I'm using this microphone. Hi, Paul Shannon. So I'm having a different today with the ceiling. It's phenomenal. My volume went down in the last two minutes. Uh, no, that's worse here. It's worse here. No, no, no. Well, like a knockout bump. Okay. No. Okay. I don't know. Can you can you hear me okay? Is it am I loud enough? I can hear you. You can hear me? Oh no, you're really quiet. 
Yeah. We're now down to zero people by the time we get going. How's how's that? How's that? Anything? Testing, testing. Is that better? Yeah. I just need to turn mine up a little bit. I think. So normally I have control media, and that's what's about. Scott Hobbs, who does sound and does all this prep work and, and makes everything look like way easier than I am. He's just been indisposed. He's got a bit of an emergency that's been happening. So hopefully he'll be with me next week. So sorry about that. Maybe we should have prepped a little bit better. But hi. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I can't. I can't hear you. Seriously? I can't hear you. Can you talk? Ryan, talk. Hi. Please. I, I Hi. can hear you perfectly fine. Okay, now I can. There was like, no, there was like, there were buttons. Some of them had lights. I touched some of them, but I think I figured it out. Okay. I'm just not going to touch anything. Don't touch anything. I'm not going to touch anything. So, All right. <laughs> so how are you? Uh, well, I'm not touching anything either. I'm, okay. and I'm, I'm great. <laughs> okay, good. So, so I'll start again. I did a bit of an intro on the last one, which will get deleted promptly. Okay. But I'm uh, so this is the this is the pre-recording of the podcast Over the Edge. It's a uh, just a show about anxiety in pandemic times. And uh, tonight I'm here with Ryan McMahon. You're a writer, comedian, podcaster. I don't know if any of you guys have seen uh, or heard, sorry, uh, the Thunder Bay podcast, and that was in conjunction with shoot, Canada sorry. Land. Canada land and it was it was amazing like it has like you you have an audience of like over a million at least and you've just released the second part with second Canada season, land yeah. second yep. season okay yep. um, and that came out I think last week so if you're familiar with that um, you guys should absolutely check it out plug it again at the end it's fine this is all gonna get cut out it's gonna be great uh, oh that's great <laughs> okay so um, yeah so I wanted to ask you um, you know, how are, how, how is everything? How are you handling the pandemic? Yeah. Uh, so Manitoba's on fire. Um, everywhere's on fire. And uh, everything I've ever worked hard for is over. So I'm doing fine. Uh, and uh, my daughters are still alive. And that's all that matters, really. <laughs> Okay. Well, I, we, yeah. How, yeah. Sorry, how old, are, how old are your daughters? 17 and 15. Okay, are you homeschooling them? Uh, they're homeschooling themselves. <laughs> are they? Okay. <laughs> what got me into sort of the podcast was your talks during the first lockdown. Ah. Uh, that, yeah, so I'd, I'd watch some of them. And, and I remember one of yours was specifically on how people think they're doing podcasts, but they're doing them wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I've, I've just, I've been, I was pod, I've been podcasting since 2008, since before Apple even had a podcast directory. And so when people want to podcast, I'm like, you should. I love it. I, I believe in it. It's a medium that will create change. It's a tool for business, pleasure, social change. Uh, but, you know, putting an audio file on the internet is not podcasting. So the things you need to do to podcast, you should do them if you want to have a podcast. And people get so mad at me. It's like, hey, what's with the grumpy uncle routine? Like, calm the like, fuck down. No, you, you need an intro. You need an outro. You need to put it on, like, Spotify. It needs to be streamable. You need to be able to download it. Yeah. It's not yeah. just uh, It's yeah, like a... Uh, it's like an old lumberjack saying, you know, like, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing well. Uh, so yeah, I, yeah is that a lumberjack that. saying? It's probably not. I'm not up to with my lumberjack lingo. <laughs> I've let that slide, and maybe that just has to do with stress. I'm not sure. And That's I just fair. want to take a second just to acknowledge the fact that I'm very aware that I messaged you earlier, and I said, "Hey, it would be really cool if you had a microphone." And you're like, "That's literally what I do." So yeah. Oh uh, yeah. And I felt well, really I, good. I mean, I, I'm sorry, I'm. So yeah, I've got, I've got a lot of gear, but we're doing yeah. it this way, which is totally better than, you know, high fandangled kind of yep. cameras and lights and action. And um, this is the future. This is the world. I, and this, this is, is by the way, like really, really fun. And I'm, I'm so glad to have a break from everything else I'm doing to chill with someone that is also very funny, 
your TikTok game has got yeah. me through COVID. And uh, <laughs> awesome. yeah, yeah, it's Love so, it. it's so Thank fun. You. Yeah. And like, I don't know, like, I know, I know because we're all kind of locked in our own spaces and doing our own thing. It's, it, we go a bit mad, <laughs> but I love that you've created characters and like <laughs> you have this like amazing uh, COVID TikTok persona thing that just really shines and is so funny. And you've made me laugh so much during COVID. So thank oh, you. Thank you. That means so much. I have to do characters because if it's going to be more than one character, I have to play all the characters because right. lockdown. So right. That... And when, when we do characters, we're totally not being ourselves. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> My just... accents are amazing. <laughs> I like, I. Your Russian don't... ones, I was like, uh, <laughs> it's comedy. <laughs> yeah. We're not doing Shakespeare aware. here, folks. We can, we oh. can. We can let the sliding, slipping accent uh, hang. It's totally fine. Yeah, I don't think I, Spanish and Russian are <laughs> or French or anything or whatever that old English is. I was trying to say was British. Whatever. Yeah, it was. It was. It was fantastic. And yeah, just truly, like, thank you. Like, thanks for inviting me here, and um, and thanks for your laughs and your comedy. And um, you know, you've you've built something really cool. Like the numbers that you get are really good and like people are watching it and commenting and sharing and like, it's just so dope. I'm so, and I'm actually as surprised as anybody like in my, in the eighth week of, of lockdown, I, I literally put on a wedding dress and went and sat in the garage and filmed myself reading completely silently and eating cheesies off of the wedding dress. And so I didn't say anything. I just sat there and read a book. It was called A Silent Reading, Loneliness is a Way of Life. And uh, <laughs> when I checked it out later, I was like a thousand people, really? And they're like, when are you doing the next chapter? You know what? You can read ahead. <laughs> yeah, I just... Yeah. I would, I would be really surprised. So I would do something a little weird and then, and then I just feel like internet kind of encourages me. And then every once in a while the internet goes, yeah, no, that was a little, maybe bring it back a little bit. So. Well, you... here, so I, you know, I talk to people for a living and interview people all the time. So forgive me for trying to kind of flip this on you right off the top. I but, noticed that. <laughs> but, but is this something you think you would have done outside of COVID? Like, cause you found something absolutely. here. No, I wouldn't have. I, I just figured I would just do comedy whenever comedy comes back and somebody had, and somebody mentioned to me, said, you need to have an online presence. And I'm like, well, I kind of like to produce shows. I don't really like to be the center of attention. And it was like, well, do that or be, or fall into obscurity. So that right. was when I joined, I, so I just joined TikTok. I started a YouTube channel. I just started doing some, some weird things. And uh, there was a 0% chance I would even have a TikTok account if we hadn't ended up in lockdown. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's working. So congrats. Like, it's Thanks. really you, fun. It's really exciting. Thank you. Are you on? Are you on TikTok? I had it for 30 seconds and I looked at it and I was like, I don't have time to learn anything else. Yeah, it'll ruin your life. Uh, what <laughs> it's 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 just it's a different it's completely. Yeah, it's completely a different world. But if you get into it, it's actually very addictive. It's very fun. It's very easy. Yeah, and... I've heard. And and by the way, I've 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 definitely um, enjoyed some edibles and like gone down t t TikTok rabbit holes that yeah. b brought the sun up. Um, and oh, I, I was think like, everybody's done that. I thought, yeah, like, is, yeah. It, is, it, is it getting light out? Cause it's four o'clock in the morning. You're like, yeah, but it's the sun's <laughs> fault. It's too early for the sun to come up. It's not because I've been looking at TikToks all night. Yeah. It's like, uh, like when the clock strikes, strikes 4 25 AM, there's a faint, yeah. a faint smell of egg McMuffins and regret in the air. And you're like, Oh, I think I'm going for an egg McMuffin. It feels like that time. I, I had that. And then I ended up walking to the store and I was brought back to like my time in Vancouver of like the walk of shame at 4 a.m. to the max to, oh. you know, go get a bag of chips. And, you know. Is that, is that your post, post coital snack? Salt and vinegars? <laughs> like, you know what? I need a Pepsi. That's, yeah. <laughs> Pepsi and a toothbrush. Oh, my God. <laughs> so expensive at gas you can get both of those things at a max oh yeah okay well <laughs> I mean, I, not that i would know yeah I know. i've heard i've heard <laughs> uh, 
uh, TikTok's difficult though. I'm going to try to actually sort of moving a little bit away. It's it's a kids app. I've been I behave like I behave. I behave. I've never had. I don't know if you've ever had one of those bans or something on Facebook or I've been good with Instagram. I've been shut down three times now. They've removed videos. I've been if we there's a creator come fund. If it comes to Canada, I don't have an account in good standing anymore. So why I, why 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 are they removing? I was promoting violence. I appealed it. <laughs> And well, <laughs> I, they well, said I, was promo I mean, I wasn't doing that's what they said I was doing. They said I would that, oh. that, that, that it, it was in. Yeah, no, I wasn't like, yeah, yeah. Why, why, so stabbing is not being, bad. Why am I being punished? <laughs> what is gonna, oh, it's so American. Um, yeah, so they, they took it off because it was, uh, uh, yeah, promoting. And then one time I accidentally, and this was an accident. I accidentally uploaded illegal content. But it was because uh, the person <laughs> the person before me had, had uploaded it. And I didn't know that it was, you know, so I had I done, a, I had done I the see. video off of that using the sound. And I don't know. But it's very, like, it's like there's nobody you can talk to. It's not like there's no manager or something you can talk to. So I, so I appeal it, and then they come back and say, no, we stand our ground. I can, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll DM you the, the videos that were, I've got three of them that were deemed inappropriate. Yeah. Well, One's obvious, <laughs> but. well, I mean, that's, I mean, that's the, that's the game now, like the, the artificial intelligence and the depths to which it is, it is in our lives is like, is, is just completely unbelievable. And it, yeah, the robots are deciding whether, whether, your TikToks are appropriate for human consumption. It's it's like, I don't know how far this goes and how far this takes us, but it's 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 frightening to me that the robots are telling me what to buy. They're telling me what I should watch. They're making playlists for me every morning on Spotify. Like, um, we don't we don't really have to think for ourselves very much anymore, which is fine. But. Um, you know, like smart fridge. Do you know about a smart fridge? Yes. <laughs> Do you have a smart fridge? No, but you I, might have a smart fridge. Oh my I, god, I'm I have coming a smart to your house. Microwave. I've got a smart <laughs> microwave. I've got. They all have that now, where you can just hold your phone up and it talks to LG and it says what's wrong with it, and then they do a diagnostic diagnostic over the phone, and it'll give you. It'll tell you you go buy a new microwave. Is it like, uh, uh, good morning? Um, <laughs> I'd enjoy shoot it. I would shoot it in the face. Enjoy like, your enjoy your microwaved egg. You have one bag of popcorn left. Here's your horoscope. <laughs> Remember when... to love yourself. It's yeah, like... you know what? I wouldn't put up with that shit anyway. But if I, yeah, I, it will. Uh, it sounds like I won the lottery whenever like my food is done. So right. it's in tune with how I feel about getting ready to eat food. By the way, I should say, if I could find. Uh, a partner in my life to show me as much love as that microwave voice that I just made. Yeah. If I could ever find that, I'd be happy. Like really? someone that like tells me to enjoy my egg and uh, I, have a good I day. I feel like I should give you my microwave. I, I, <laughs> I would I, love, I would love I'm really to. Bad uh, with social cues. <laughs> I would love to say goodbye to your microwave at 4:25 a.m. and walk to the Max and get a Pepsi. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you really need. You need TikTok. Um, <laughs> you because uh, that's how you stay up till four o'clock in the morning. Unless yeah. yeah, yeah. So, what's your what's your experience with really with obviously so you have a pile of stuff going on. Is there a time even like you have been recently where you felt like you couldn't handle? What do you do to handle the stress with kids, lack lack of work, you know, money and sick, and I don't want to yeah with everything. I don't know. I wish, yeah, I wish I had something better for you uh, here, but yeah. I, I, you know, I, I'll say like, I, I, well, no, I, I'm just saying like, I, I, I don't know how to deal with things very well. And, and I've certainly been more healthy um, um, in the last, I would say year or so with, with sort of my general anxiety and, and just kind of like uh, mental health stuff. But you know, you don't, it's so cliche, you don't understand what you're going through until you understand what you're going through. And, um, and yeah, I, 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 I um, because I'm a business, and my career is a small business, like, I don't have, I don't know how I'm making life happen in February 2021. Um, and I suppose that's why I worry all the time. And, 
and I'm, I'm con my brain is constantly racing about certain things. And, you know, there's, there's, there's a part of, of being a creative person that works, um, that, that works in, in the creative field that I do that is very rewarding and, and I would not have it any other way. But I mean, I would be lying to you if I didn't tell you I wish I was a manager at Hooters or something, you know, like, like just like I could go to work and go home and not think about work when I'm at home. Um, and it's unsettling. It's unsettling that in that we as artists uh, have to live this way out of necessity that you know, it's a bit, be careful what you wish for. Every comic, when they start out, wish they could pay their bills doing comedy. And that's great. And it took me, it took me a few years to get there. Um, but then once you get there, it's a constant, um, it's a constant hustle. And it's, it's a constant um, effort to, to continue, you know, it's like playing volleyball with yourself. And uh, these aren't complaints. We are the luckiest people in the world when you can trick the universe into believing in you and giving you an opportunity to do the thing you love. But, um, it's funny that you real... say trick. I'm just wondering. Yeah. So you're incredibly yeah. talented and everything you have, it just sounds like a little bit of imposter syndrome right there, but yeah. Well, I'm not even fake humble. Like I'm not even, I'm not, anyone that knows me knows how insecure I am and my self-esteem is shit. And I, I just, I have a weird job. You have a weird job. We, we, comics have weird jobs and if you write or if you paint if you make music uh and you can do that for a living it's a weird it's a weird existence and from, it's one it's one that you're aware of can go away anytime just from the outside looking in just looking at your last year uh does the fact that you were handling the subject matter that you were in your Thunder Bay podcast, you were dealing with systemic racism. I mean, your interviews must have been absolutely gut wrenching. I couldn't imagine. Was, they're they're hard to listen to. They hurt. And so, yeah, is were you were you doing uh, the Thunder Bay podcast in the last eight months? Uh, has that affected you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it does. And and it. I mean, as an indigenous person, you wake up every day affected by it. So you don't get the you don't get to option out of it. Um, and, and there's no, all, I don't have a plan B. So, uh, you know, this is what it is. And, you know, I'm trying, I guess I'm trying really hard to, uh, continue figuring out how to get better at, at work-life balance so that I'm not stressed about life and I'm not stressed about work, but instead I've found a way to, you know, to let these things coexist in my life. But I find often I'll be way off in my life and leaving work behind or vice versa. And, um, and I find that I, I become reclusive and I pull back when I'm out of balance. And so I, I have big shoulders. I'm here for the, for the fight. I'm here. I, I will go down in flames fighting for indigenous people, namely indigenous youth and indigenous women, given their realities in this country today. Um, <clears throat> fighting for in, uh, queer indigenous youth to make sure they have safe spaces in their communities and in, in towns and cities across Canada. This is what I'm here for. And I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I want to fight everyone. I want all the fights. I want all that smoke. Um, so it doesn't bother me to, to wake up and to do that um, as work and, and, and as a commitment back to my community. But um, but there's so much of it all the time that that's where it gets confusing. Like you have to also be able to go, I, I can't do everything. Um, I pass this off or tell other people to come in and, and build teams of people that can do some of the work. And that's what's happening. Um, and so I'm one person in a whole movement of others that are doing this work. Um, and I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to, I'm trying to strike a balance. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm on, I'm on, um, like, a Aboriginal movement TikTok. Like, there's an entire culture yeah. there that, and I, I feel like I just, I learned so much through your podcast and, and literally through these TikTok videos and mm. stuff. And I mean, you're, it's 2020, maybe we could all have clean water, whatever. Yeah, I mean, it, it and look, I think they're going to write books about this time 30 or 40 years from now. And oh. we're, we're, we're going through the change. Um, and there's no, there's no 
uh, if it's called reconciliation still, um, there is, you can't go to Chapters Indigo and buy reconciliation for dummies. Like it, it doesn't yeah. exist. We're writing um, it during a pandemic. Or, well, I might be writing it right now. Uh, yeah. But, um, um, you know, like we're, we're, we're fumbling through it. We're going to be okay. We've come a long way in a short amount of time. And, um, and I, yeah, I trust, that, I trust that we're trending in the right direction and we'll be okay. Are you optimistic about how uh, shows will be consumed and performed post uh, vaccine? <sighs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, it feels like everything's different. I mean, I'm, I'm going to Just for Laughs in a couple of weeks. Um, yeah. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. on that, by the way. I, yeah, That's... thank you. Thanks. I'm how really that, excited. How does that work? Okay, so you were invited back. Now, do you go? Sorry, you do you just go like and, and just perform it? And you're just recorded on a stage without an audience, or? Um. So really, this is the festival, just for last festival. Right. Um. <clears throat> so, I don't even know if I'm allowed to talk about this. I'm probably not. Oh. But don't you know? Just whatever. Who gives a shit? Just, uh, just replace it. Just say it was. Can you say it was yuck? Yeah. Uh, it's work that we can say. it's uh, uh, gust for for gaffs. I'm going to gust for gaffs in a few weeks, and allegedly I've heard that there's. I going just to got be, that right now. Yeah, it was a bit of a slow take up. Yeah, <laughs> you're welcome, internet. You're welcome. Uh, I'm here all night. Try the veal. Tip your weight staff. Um, uh, I, yeah, I'm told it's. Uh, I'm told. They will be very significantly reduced crowds, live tapings, um, uh, COVID checks before I leave, uh, COVID checks before when I arrive. Uh, there's there will be a whole protocols. I mean, the Canadian film and TV industry is working right now; they're not shut down. Um, and the and I I shot my documentary series all this past summer, and you're basically under five layers of protection: federal, provincial, municipal. Your, your own company uh, protections and your own industry standards. So there's so much protection in Canadian film and TV right now for those working. Uh, there's, there's COVID uh, protocol technicians on set uh, watching everyone's every move. So it will be safe uh, if the province doesn't shut down and if we're managed to get there, um, that'll happen in a few weeks. So, I mean, I, I feel like I feel like touring is going to be different. I'm, I'm like, I'm weirded out by all the things we didn't do before, like uh, hand handrails, uh, public water fountains. Like <laughs> those yeah. are things that I don't like anymore. <laughs> you know, like so, yeah. I, I, it, it feels like things are going to change again, and we're just in this ride right now. Yeah, uh, and you know, and we're we're trying to figure it out. We're we're, we're trying to figure it out. So. Are you going to get the vaccine when it's available? Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't get the oh, good. flu shot. I asked. Genuinely, yeah, just ge genuinely, genuinely curious because there's so many things and stories and theories and everything out there. So you figure maybe instead yeah, of the well, vaccine, you just like wash I mean, hands. by the way, if, if people are anti-vax, you're basically a flat earther to me. Um, so I don't really have like space to you know, talk about science with non-scientists or these non-disease control people. Um, and I'm, I, and I, I see a lot of public debate about these things. I will say that I think medicine is good. I think we have to let the experts decide what is right and who qualifies for this like first round of vaccines. I personally am just gonna continue to be diligent and safe. I will continue to get tested when I'm asked uh, for work. But I, I feel like it will take some time for, it seems like it's gonna take time for a vaccine to be figured out and distributed properly. Yeah, because to and, my understanding, this isn't like, this isn't the flu shot. This isn't the annual flu shot. Exactly. My understanding is you get it and then you're immune to it. So what right. you would be doing would be, so curiosity would be depending on like a herd, like that whole herd, either herd mentality or just that you won't get it. The I'm just under the general idea that we're all going to get it. Like we'll get it at different right. times. Let's, let's just not overwhelm the hospitals. Right. And uh, until until I found out that you can get it again or that your immunity goes down and you can actually just keep catching it. <laughs> now I'm paying attention to the. Can I get a Can I get two vaccines at the same time? Will I be? 
yeah well this also goes back to your to the walk of shame at max like i won't be kissing strangers anytime <laughs> like that those, that's that over out, yeah. yeah that's uh, that's uh no more licking doorknobs nope. out the window nah, no, no more, more that <laughs> no no um chewing on shopping cart no. right no you know like the list no, uh, list goes on really yeah 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 so limited so I god know. i feel so oppressed so oppressed Do you think what is stephen a... harper the prime minister again jesus christ he, he's probably gonna get the vaccine though probably. <laughs> he's probably got I, it he's probably got it he probably invested his millions into the company he's like yeah mass With what's death going on in sickness. the states we can do literally whatever the fuck we want right now right because well we're, like we're we're good to go we yeah, can... yeah 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 <laughs> and, yeah and yeah like the owner of pfizer sold off 65 percent of his stock because yeah, Pfizer, was, yeah, like, like, okay, fun. rich man, like, hey, everybody, I just created a vaccine, it's gonna make a ton of money, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna bail, it I'm gonna cash out, me, yeah, all of that stuff, it just makes me nervous, and it's probably because I, I'm ignorant, like, I just don't have a general knowledge of it, I don't know how their stock market could have recovered and been doing well, and how the NASDAQ is up three points, you know, today, when, it, right, didn't we just have a pandemic, like, people are, the, the real estate market is climbing, like, yeah, that gives me, I have I don't no know. faith in a system that's going to watch this many people lose this many jobs. And this Canadian, I'm talking American, but Canadian, how, how we can lose this many jobs, yet, uh, yeah, yet the values are climbing, interest rates are dropping, and people are still investing. They're buying uh, stocks now like it's soup. Yeah, they're on sale. Oh, there's yeah. There's little people that are, that are out of work. And the rest of us are looking for toilet paper. Are we doing that again? Are I don't we, know. Feels this, like we're heading there. How, how are you doing where you are? You're right in Winnipeg. I've got toilet paper. No, I don't. I wasn't, I wasn't this wasn't a toilet paper lead in question, I promise. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this was, I probably should have, should have read the news. Are You guys are down to uh, red, right? You guys are red zone now? We are, uh, the province is locked down. So when you go into stores, they have tape marked off on non-essential goods. Uh, you're not allowed to go in and browse the magazine section at the local grocery store. Like it's, it's, um, it's extreme. And, 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 um, you know, without getting into partisan politics and shit, like the conservative governments across the prairies, starting from Alberta, right in through into Ontario, all of them blew it. Every one of them. And this is what you get when you want to be, when you want to look for cost efficiencies in government, they didn't respond quickly enough that when they did respond, it was inf insufficient. And locally in Manitoba, the story here is um, Brian Pallister and the PC government, um, they campaigned on, on cutting hospital rooms on or sorry, on cutting hospitals and emergency beds. They said that the, the healthcare system in Manitoba was bloated, it was overfunded and over resourced. And nurses and doctors on yeah, the front take the lines. Money out of the hospitals. Yeah, that's where we should that's where <laughs> that's where 30, we should take it from. Ford took thirty three million out of uh, out of mental health just last year. So, right. Yeah. Right. I, so so you know and this is where I kinda like People don't like this and I don't like saying it, but this is a, we get what we fucking, we get what we deserve. So well, people, yeah. people don't want to go out and vote. Just fuck this guy and fuck that guy. You get what you deserve. And you know what? If we want better government, we have to participate. We have to give a shit. We have to want better communities, good communities, just for communities, uh, just communities for all those on the margins, those not well, and those well, we, we, there's, there's a balance that needs to be struck and, and uh, we have to want that. And, and we I don't, just, if we're not voting, we don't, if we're not voting them in, as far as I'm concerned, if 33 million or the money that goes out of the hospital, when you're taking money out of the public sector through um, taking it away from mental health and addictions, period. Just out of, out of that's where they had taken it from to my understanding here in Thunder Bay is like you're all you're doing is just turning around and putting that money right into you know police emergency services and regulatory into the jails that's where the money's going you don't totally. need to earmark it but if you're going to pull it out of helping then you're going totally. to put it into policing and this this is a comment for this is a comment for Canada it's it's that you know 
we generally uh, we're, we're a complacent, lazy uh, country that we know generally where our next meal is coming from. We know hockey night in Canada is on on Saturday night. Uh, we punch the clock, we go home, we raise our shitty little kids. Um, and there's no war. There's generally, there's no, uh, uh, natural disaster threat. We just, we just get to like take pot shots at the assholes on TV. We don't like, and, and go to Tim Hortons and stuff our faces with donuts. And that doesn't work anymore. The world has changed and this country has a lot of work to do to catch up to, we were talking about automation earlier. We have to decide whether we want to automate the towns and cities and municipalities we live in. I don't think we're going to have a choice. Well, and, and that's fine if we don't have a choice, but how are we going to replace those jobs? Because computers don't pay taxes and these big corporations don't pay taxes either. So like, you know, we have to want, we have to be motivated by wanting to take care of each other. And, and if we look at examples of where our tax dollars go um, into, into helping old folks and, and, and sick people, like we, we have to want this for our society. We have to want this for our democracy. And, and this is where it's like, <clears throat> you look at, you look at uh, uh, percentages of voters that show up in, the, in, in provincial or federal elections, it's low. Oh yeah. It's, it's low. I, I lived in BC. We didn't vote because it was decided by Ontario by the time it got that far. So right. if you don't have a whole lot of buy-in, you're just not going to get the turnout. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, with that said, this we're, I'm not saying anything funny at all. Um, I'm just That's, going that on a wasn't tirade. A requi- it wasn't a requirement. <laughs> oh, good, good. Um, I think maybe that's just what I'll do it just for laughs. I'll just go, and one more thing, you sons of bitches. Keep the cameras rolling. Keep if the cameras rolling. Out of the existing, then we'll just sort of go here. And I, I, you can answer this one if you want. But out of the existing uh, parties and the people, and if, if everybody stayed exactly the same, and you were to handpick the government, what, where would you say? Would you say, okay, I would go NDP with, uh, like, just what would... What appeals to you the most? Because I assume that a conservative government right now does not. Well, I, I mean, I, I would say that that there are redeemable ideas in all of the parties. There, there are things that that I can agree with inside of any of those parties. I, I'm actually nonpartisan. I, I, I don't have a horse right. in the race. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a horse in the race. As an indigenous person in, in living in Canada, like uh, me voting in a federal election, uh, when I see myself as an Anishinaabe person, before I see myself as a Canadian person, um, I'm. I'm. I just pay attention to what everyone's uh, talking about, what everyone's saying, and I try to contribute positively where I can make. Uh, a difference. And so my vote that must be very difficult. Sometimes my like votes it. up for grabs. So yeah. I look at your platform. I ask you where, where are you uh, relative to indigenous issues and, and let's have the conversation. Um, and, and I don't think that there's a perfect party. There is not a perfect politician. Um, I think the liberals, uh, federal liberals inherited this giant uh, uh, social responsibility windfall called truth and reconciliation. Um, it looked as though Trudeau and his, his, his cabinet did that, but they didn't. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they inherited that. And all of the goodwill that was there uh, from, the, from, from the time they, they came into power to now is exhausted itself. And people are still waiting for tangible results and change. Now, Liberals are going to clap back at me and go, yeah, but it has been so, but we've done so much for so, so, for so quickly. That's how uh-huh. they sound too. That, that is their is voice. Really I've talked to every one of them. I they agree. all have that voice. Um, we can't program and service our way out of the mess we're in in Canada as it relates oh, to indigenous like and non-indigenous people. It's not going to happen. And so the conversation needs to expand. It needs to not be about programs and services. We can already see Trudeau and the Liberals have broken their promise on drinking water. They announced they're not going to be able to do it. There's 91 uh, communities that are still 
uh, in need of clean drinking water. They've done a heck of a lot. They set the bar too high. It, it was it was it was admirable, uh, but uh, admirable policy doesn't save lives. So, so I have a lot of respect for what they have tried to do. Um, I have a lot of, of respect for the NDP. Uh, I think Jagmeet Singh is a dynamic leader that will figure it out. I don't know if he has time to figure it out. I really like him. I so really, do I. I really, yeah. So do I. Um, and I'm not talking about the cranberry juice on the skateboard thing. Like, oh. I liked him before that. Who knew, like, a, a native guy, <laughs> native and Mexican guy from Idaho was going to save 2020? Who that? Everything just started getting better ever since him. Since, since him. What's really it's a weird about, thing. Yeah. That was I had so many movie. questions when I saw that video. Yeah. It, and you you, you, you For, know a little bit of the backstory, right? That was him. He just, uh, he's yeah. just... He's just a good guy. He's feeling good. Yeah. And he could have felt like everything went to shit that day, but no. Nope, Car broke he... down. Like, that was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Car broke down. I'm just going to skateboard to the warehouse. Potato yes. warehouse. That's what I love about And I've got a TikTok. I've got the potato warehouse. I'm going, I, I follow and I'm responsive to, uh, to, to positivity, to a lot of positivity. So I get a lot of that. And that's why it's so addictive because I'm just fed. Oh you know, yeah. Ocean spray drinking, skateboard riding people oh, like, yeah. for an entire week. That's all I saw. That's all and I was just like, yeah. But I had I had I had so many questions like where's the lid to the cranberry juice? I'm stressed <laughs> out. <laughs> That's the dad in you. How are you gonna put that back in the fridge? <laughs> and you're drinking use a glass. You should You're go gonna comment. spill, bro. Like what you're where's a, the lid? Is, what also, are they gonna say at the potato factory when you get that on your shirt? <laughs> your white what t-shirt. Is, I'm constantly stressed out about his white t-shirt. What t are you going to drink on the way home to change your shirt? Oh, my God. How many white t-shirts do you have in your bag? Because this is a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah. Uh, what a and also, like, like, everyone's like, oh, the song, the song, the song. I'm like, okay, yeah, the song. You guys, he's fucking skateboarding down an off-ramp on a freeway. Can we talk about the impending death? Like, like he's on the off-ramp, you guys, on a skateboard. Someone help him. But the song. One, one, he's late for work, and that just shows ethic right there. Yeah. It's yeah. a good thing. But you got you to try. And boom, and now he's famous, just like that. Hey, you're smoking weed with Snoop Dogg on Instagram, hawking fucking burgers and insurance. You're going to be okay. I spend all this time and I do these different characters and I put my, uh, I, I put my, you know, my subtitles and stuff on it and I, and I post it and it gets like 4,000 views. I'm like, yeah. And then I do a drum duet where I pretend I'm playing the drums t to a Nirvana uh, soundbite from Vine from 16 years ago. And I, you know, I got a million views. I'm like, what? Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, this is a thing. So I, I graduated from university in 1999, went to theater school, moved to Toronto, chased my dreams, second city, auditioned for SNL, like, like starved, was homeless in Toronto, slept on couches, broke uh, the whole, the whole, the whole journey. And, and, you know, uh, comedy festivals and comedy specials and everything else. And I do a video and it gets like 1500 views on Facebook. And then like, I see someone post like some little native TikTok asshole who's got like 80 million views on their channel yeah. and they're doing it without trying. And I'm like, yeah, I fucking quit. I quit. Because I, said, that was the point. <laughs> the reason why, and I've got, I, like, it wasn't like I, I got on TikTok and I was like, yeah, I'm doing so well at it. I had like eight other social media platforms. It was because when I got on TikTok, I didn't give a shit. I was like, right. I'm going to post whatever. And I, and that's how I did it. And right. I, you know, ended up with like followers and stuff from that. And then just, I always kept my interaction up, but that's what happened. So then one day I turned around, I was like, this is, I'm doing okay on this. And I've right. got 116 subscribers on uh, YouTube right now. You should check it out. It's Mickey Hughes uh, Incidents Comedy. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You're not going to join it because if you do the link from Facebook, you have to sign in and nobody remembers their password. Well, isn't this a curious thing though? Like how, I, I'm really excited by by people sort of diversifying their platform because because you will you will find if you're doing comedy 
or if you're creative and trying to express yourself and your and, and share your work through any of these mediums, some of them don't work. Like some of them aren't meant for us. And then boom, you land on something that works and you create in this your own space and you carve out that space and it's it's perfect. And and by the way, I should I should go back and say the little asshole TikTok stars I'm totally fine with. Like more indigenous TikTok of, stars. Like just oh, more, more goodness. More yes. goodness. Everyone do it. Um, I'm mo I'm mostly joking, but I fucking quit. I'm not trying yeah. <laughs> trying to do videos anymore. Fuck that. I'm I'm I, the world has passed me by. I'm now going like I was on YouTube in 2008. I was you on YouTube. <laughs> Join me on ICQ. I'm the I'm the only one there. You don't even need my. Yeah, I do the New York Times crossword puzzle every Sunday on pieces of paper. Do you even know what the New York Times is? <laughs> do you? Do you really? Do you, Who do you do the New York do you do the New York Times? I always find that one was was too difficult. I always had a really hard time with the New York Times. Like I've never I don't know. finished a New York Times crossword. That but that's why I asked. When I end, yeah, I used to I don't know. There's a there's a me. the biggest idiot I know uh just posted on Instagram that he can finish finish a Rubik's Cube in a minute and twelve seconds. He just practiced all COVID and he's fucking, he's doing this shit. And it's like, it's like, this guy's an asshole. He's an idiot. Like, now he's got a he's truck. The... He's drinking o ocean spray. He's doing, TikTok. he's doing Rubik's cube commercials with Snoop doing, Doggy yeah. Dog and Dog Face. It's like, what? And that's what it is. Well, why can't I? Like, when's my moment? And what's it going to be? What's the moment going to be? Like, you know, people like, I don't know. I don't you know. know but the... you know what? One, one time I heard an elder say, you know, when water is to toxic, when something spills in the water, how does water clean itself? And I was like, I don't know, like, ugh, I, I have no idea. And they said more water. You just keep putting water in the water and it, it'll, it'll purify itself. It, the runoff will, will, will filter out the bad. And I, I just keep feeling that way about our work right now is like, some of it's working, some of it's not. Some of it's hitting, some of it's not. But as long as we just keep putting more water into the water, keep putting more work out until, until it lands, you know? And I, I, I just, like, for, for me, 20 years of, uh, since 1999, of this, like, creative pursuit, and finally, like, a few years ago, it, it works. Like, it clicks. And I, and I don't have to, I'm not struggling anymore. And, like, you know, and... and I, I just think that's the key is we just persist, we continue, we we find new things to talk about that makes us laugh and mm -hmm. and and we hope that other people laugh. And what what do you what do you say when people when and I'm sure you've heard this too about how comedy how the curve is changing. Do you do you do you yeah. agree with that? Do you I cuz I feel and what's your idea of what the difference is going to be because I really I just can't see coming back from from COVID and just having everything be like, okay, we've all got our, you know, we've had our shots. Some of us have had our shots. Some of us are you. Um, <laughs> yeah. And we're, and we're going back into it. I think that, uh, I think streaming is probably a little bit more solidified. What, what yeah. Streaming podcasts and stuff. What's your streaming you have... podcasts. I think all of those are squarely here to say, I, I think we've been shown like how much money we wasted traveling to cities for like single meetings overnight like all of those kind of things like I, I used to like take meetings um like from one gig I'd fly to Toronto to like meet with the CBC on something and then fly home like that's all over I'm not doing that shit anymore I don't need to do that shit anymore. so a lot of a lot of the work I think has changed venues I think I, I hope I mean this is what I'm worried about is like the venues we play across Canada and across North America are shuttering. Like they can't stay open. That was and, they're just, they're not going to, are they coming back? And that's, that's a, that's so sad because there are so few venues already. And so, you know, as, as these venues close and, and can't stay open um, because no one's allowed to go in them, I don't know what's going to be left. I think, you know, the, my last proper tour across Canada was 2018, and that's 36 shows in 36 cities in two months. And, and I was playing venues that had capacities of like 150 to 250 people, and we 
we'd go over capacity. Like it was standing, it was, people are sweating. And that's, I, that's what I personally like, like right on stage with me, rock and roll. Everyone's there having a good time. That's what I prefer. I don't want 1500 seats in a theater. I don't like that. Um, like the smaller. I love this. I'll go in, I'll like go in the someone's Finlandia garage. Here in Thunder Bay. Yeah. Right. Right. I'd rather play your garage with 50 people that are looking to have a good time than, than play the Thunder Bay auditorium. You know, have like a garage that will fit 50 people. That'll, maybe that's what it'll be. Maybe it'll be grassroots thing. Maybe it'll be that real. Oh, I hope so. Like I hope so. And, and, and there was lots of that uh, happening, like people doing backyard shows. And, yeah. you know, and you I find out I, I an want... hour before, and then you just, everybody just goes there before they have time to complain, and you just disperse after. Actually, that was, that was fun. I felt like I was going to bootlegged comedy shows. Like, yeah, yeah. And there's something really, sure. there's something really, for comedy anyway, I think there's something really important about that. Like there's something still really important about being in a place with low ceilings, um, th you know, that, 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 that it's, it's an event. It's, it's like an exclusive sort of like, if you know about this comic, then you know how good this hour is going to be. And you go and you, you, and, and I'm holding onto this so tightly that, that, that will still be around when this it is over. It will be. People want to laugh. If anything's going to be left, I mean, it's going to be comedy. Like, <clears throat> Nobody, excuse me, COVID, uh, nobody, nobody I, that I don't, like, you don't go to a comedy show and somebody says, well, how, how did that go, right? I mean, it was a right. comedy show. They don't say, oh, it was total bullshit. Catch them next right. year, maybe it'll be better. Right. You can go to a comedy show that's bad, but as for the most part, you come out and your cheeks hurt, and you're, right. you know, from laughing, you're laughing so hard you miss some other jokes, like. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess, I guess it's like, We'll wait and see. I think, I think the, I think the audiences are going to be more hesitant to come out in droves. I think the venues will respond by, um, by having distance tables. Like, I think there's things like that that are going to stay. Um, yeah, people, there are, people are sheep kind of some, somebody had mentioned here that I don't know if it was a rumor or something, but that, uh, some, that there was COVID or something at a, like at a thrift store. So then everybody hears they, they stop going to thrift stores. Are you, are, you, are you kidding me? Like, that's how, like, they, they're driven, they're charity driven by donation. And that yeah. was just, it was just wrong. And that's just the way people are, because I'm worried about that as well. So some tickets will go on sale, and nobody's going to want them because COVID. Who knows? I mean, I'm, I think that it's going to take some time for it to rebound and for it to come back. But I know that what we do is important uh, to some people. Um, and, and having a place for us to gather and think more deeply uh, or less deeply about things uh, is as human as it gets. And for those of us that have bitten, been bitten by the bug, yeah, we're turning to the internet podcasting, we're turning to streaming, um, Twitch, uh, you know, hosting and things like that to, you know, to, 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 to scratch that itch. And I think that that's, that's still really good. And, and you're right. People want that and need that. Yes, absolutely. Where, uh, where can uh, you get your uh, podcast right now? Where are you? Uh, wherever people listen to podcasts, just search the words Thunder Bay. Thunder Bay. And could you want to give it, uh, your podcast, uh, like even both of them, just a, a plug? Or? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Red Man Laughing is my other uh, podcast. It's the one I've been doing for 10 years. Um, and you can search Red Man Laughing wherever you listen. Um, and Indian and Cowboy is the network that I built, all Indigenous podcasts. Um, and uh, I think there's 13 or so of them there. Um, all Indigenous people trying to make their way into podcasting. Uh, we run a Patreon. Um, we support, uh, produce, um, and pay for uh, Indigenous podcasts to exist there on our network and uh, people can check out that work if they're so inclined. Awesome. You do, you do amazing work. You're an absolute gift to all of the communities that you help, which is so many. And, oh, that's uh, kind. Thank you. I wanted to, uh, so thank you for coming, for coming yeah. here. Yeah, no, this really has been, result. this has been really fun and, uh, and congrats, congrats on your success and the things you're doing too. It's really, uh, it's, it's exciting to see people like soldiering on and and uh, in this climate, so many people have given up. So thank you for not keeps giving me up. From, keeps me from crying in my car every day. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's literally just, it's advice, I'm sure, for you too. Anyway, thanks very much. I'll let you go. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone. Ciao.